Welcome to Winning in the Shadows. We're breaking down PFL 2024, week one of the playoffs. So, uh, very important. The points, point system is is out the window here. So, now it's win in advance. And this is what we keep telling people that the books miss this. <laughs> they, 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 me they mess this up all the time. It doesn't necessarily give us a great value this week. Um, but... Just, you know, know that you don't need to pay attention to the point system. Everyone that is fighting is advanced, and if you win, you're in, and you advance, and if you lose, you are out of there. So what we're going to do here is we're going to break down the uh, prelims, just kind of uh, one at a time real quick, and then we'll go a little bit more in-depth into the main event. Um, Michelle Montague and Mar uh, Marilia Morais. Uh, here's what you need to know about Morais. Uh She fought in 2018. Uh, and then she didn't fight until 2023, where she got promptly knocked on her ass. And she's fighting Michelle Montague, who has won uh, every single one of her fights by <laughs> rear naked choke. Um, the writing is on the wall. Montague trains with Kayla Harrison, doesn't she? Yep. Like, this is an ass whooping. Mm -hmm. uh, under one and a half. <laughs> you, can't, you can't play Montague at 1,800. In PFL, you got to take shots, man. You, you just have to. We've said this. Before, you bet it differently than UFC. I don't like under one and a half in UFC. Uh, under one and a half when it comes out, if it's playable. And and pay attention because the lines will move quick. <laughs> yes, they will. Yes, they will. We learned that this week. Jordan Oliver and Braden Akeo. Uh, Jordan Oliver, Oliver is one of these guys that uh, PFL is very, very high on, even though he's only 34. Um, mm -hmm. They like him. Um, I'm guessing it's Jordan Oliver or nothing on this one, right? Yeah, <laughs> they've, been, uh, they've had him booked what twice, and both times the guys pulled out the week of the fight. It's because they knew they were about to get their brains beat in and out wrestled. Uh, Jordan Oliver should take this guy down, and he probably should get the submission. I would say within two rounds, uh, he's not going to have anything for Jordan Oliver. Could he land a flash knockout? Yeah, but uh, this this is a setup, Jordan Oliver. Uh, Montague by finish, Oliver by finish. You could find mm. much, much worse parlay pieces. Thad Jean undefeated versus Chris Brown. Uh, this is the fighter, not the singer. Although the singer has been accused of being a fighter a couple times, unfortunately. Um, Chris Brown, uh, LFA, he had a chance to jump up in competition against Carlos Leal. Lost a split decision. You and I both thought Leal won pretty um, convincingly. I will also say he also stepped up in competition against Bahamundes. Lost a split decision. I went back and watched it. I thought Bob Mondays. It's interesting. I thought Bob Mondays looked bad in that fight, but you kind of realize that Bob Mondays is the up and comer. Like he's mm -hmm. getting better with each and every fight. But uh, to me, it just says a lot that Chris Brown has stepped up twice in competition and has lost uh, both of them. Thad Gene. We like Thad Gene, don't we? We like Thad Gene. We've liked Thad Gene from the beginning. The guy has all the physical gifts. Um, I think he makes pretty good work of uh, Chris Brown. I don't think it, Chris Brown's an awkward fighter. He can make this fight look weird. So I wouldn't weird. be like no, it's, it's all a... in by Thad Gene first round knockout. Like, and we've seen Thad go to decision. He knows he can. So, you know, it's about getting the W for him. Um, be careful with your props in this one. But yeah, I, it, yeah like it's it's a great point because Chris Brown fights awkward, but it's like not even on purpose. And that almost no. makes it even more awkward. Um, it's like a sloppy Wonder Boy stance. It's, it's this karate thing, except it's not really that like dialed in and sophisticated, whatever. Uh, Elvin Espinosa, Mads Burnell. Um, Mads Burnell is, is here. He's, he's the, making me mad. Is what he on, is. I, well, he's on the pre, uh, he's on the prelims when he just beat Clay Collard, who's know. on the main card because Clay Collard is the most exciting man in fighting. I don't know if you all got the memo. What are we doing with Elvin Espinosa and Mads Burnell? I'm a huge fan of Mads Burnell, and I just can't pick one of his freaking fights right. <laughs> this season, he's been my enemy. He has been my enemy. Uh, went big on Clay Collard in the main event, and that was a big L. Went big on him against Michael Dufort. He was getting the exact fight that he wanted. He was ready to it was ready to turn it on. He gets hit with a body shot, and then crumbles up and gets submitted. It just, oh, I can't get one right. Should the Mads Brunel win? Yes. Every Mads Brunel fight, you could say, should he win? Yes. I just don't know if he does. He should beat Espinoza. 
If I have to pick somebody, I'll pick Brunel, but I'm not betting a Matt Brunel fight for the rest of there the season. There you go. I don't care if he gets a fight on the finals card. I'm not betting it. <laughs> um, Danny Sabatello is this big of a favorite? A little bit of an eyebrow raise uh, on this one. He should win, but it might as a thousand. Is, is that bettable for me? No, and not bettable. No, I'm not. What's a minus a thousand going to do for you? Um, we have seen Danny Sabatello not be able to finish a pack lunch, so <laughs> you could be looking at an over in this. I know his opponent is not good, and he's not, but. Man, Sabatello is just the most. You want to talk about boring fighters? People complain about like Colby Covington. If you've ever watched a Danny Sabatello fight, he is an ankle biter in every sense of the word, just diving at angles the whole fight. Um, uh, you, you, can you t- tell tell me your uh, in our Discord? By the way, if you haven't joined the Discord, uh, the Winning in the Shadows Discord channel for free. Uh, it's where we have all discussion. We got free plays, all that stuff. It's a very, very positive Discord channel. It's not full of, it's not full of nonsense. It's full of people who are looking to increase their bankroll, be professional about it, mm-hmm. uh, try and uplift and help each other out. Um, it's not a bunch of trash talking, and uh, it's co- it's a collaboration. It's ideas. Um, so it's a really, really great Discord channel. We're really proud of it. So if you haven't joined that yet, go ahead and do the the winning in the shadows. Experiment. What what did you say about <laughs> if you're watching a PFL and they didn't mention the what what was your yeah. line? If 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 you're watching a breakdown video for PFL, all these guys fought on uh, the Salt Lake card. If they don't bring up the fact that their last fight was at altitude and everybody was gassed by the time they walked to the arena, turn the video off. Don't yeah. take anything away from the last fights, please. Because we saw it plain as day. We had major, major problems with the altitude as soon as that fight, that card started. It was the most frustrating PFL card we've watched, we've mm-hmm. been on since Jim and I have been doing this. Like yeah. it, it literally was, I mean, you're always going to have the one that bothers you. And that one was just the, it was a nightmare. So um, let's, uh, let's go a little bit more in depth here on the main card. Biagio Ali Walsh, the uh, golden child of PFL. <sighs> He's got to get uh, his striking defense much more polished. You can tell they're working on a lot of things with him. And the thing about Biagio Ali Walsh, if you don't know, he's Muhammad Ali's grandson. I like him. He is super committed to the sport. He doesn't want to be known as Muhammad Ali's grandson. He wants to make a name for himself. Um, they keep giving him the, the layup of layups with fights. Mm-hmm. And it feels like they're getting worse. Brian Stapleton, are this you is kidding me? Yeah. This is bad. This is kind of embarrassing. Mm-hmm. Honestly, that they're giving Piaggio Ali Walsh. And we, you and I both agree this is all about cage time, isn't it? It's about getting him the experience and the cage time. It's it's very similar to the Dakota Ditch of a treatment in the beginning. Um, now, skill level-wise, I think Ditch of is on a whole other level as far as all-around MMA. But uh, we saw it in his last fight, man. We called it. They were going to get cage time. The wrestling came out of nowhere. His striking did not look great in that fight. As far as knockout power, his defense did not look great in that fight. But he did what he had to do. He stayed safe when the fight got hairy and got the decision. But we I think, think that, I think that was the cage time. But the, and that was we think that was the instructions. Like yeah. stop going out and killing guys. Mm-hmm. You're not getting any better. We need no. you to have some adversity. So you're only allowed to wrestle. You can't knock this guy out. So we mm-hmm. think that's kind of what's going on. With this camp and the gloves <laughs> are Come on, on, man. On this one. This is not going to be. Now. <laughs> Look at this poor guy. <laughs> let's spin it a little bit here. Now let's spin it. Now this is all conspiracy and hypothetical, but he has the knockouts. He went to decision. What's left across off his bingo card? Submissions. Submissions. So I would not be shocked by one bit if they're like, all right, here's your practice. Go submit this guy. Hurt him on the feet and submit him. I mean, th- this is a guy who ha- he hasn't had any pro fights, and his amateur fights are that just that. They're amateur fights. He's fighting mm-hmm. in island fights. Um, this last fight, they were wearing shin guards. Um, I, this no it's, mission. It's <laughs> just it's really really it's bad. bad. So, uh, Brian Stapleton, congratulations on your paycheck. Uh, mm-hmm. It's going to be a fun little uh, stint in the PFL, but. Um, I, I, I don't know if you're PFL, I guess you, 
you just got to keep doing that with Biagio Ali Walsh, don't you? But at some point, like, you got to give him somebody that can fight back. But he's only one and zero, so you get. Who oh you come can on! Get. Oh come on! He was showcased on every PFL card, except he was argument. deemed argument, an yeah. amateur. Look at that PFL ten yep. nine five two ten. Like yeah, they knew what amateur they were doing. fights televised at a national. <laughs> televised, and you can bet promotion. on him on the offshores. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, very amateur esque. I don't remember being yeah. able to listen. I could bet on Piaggio and Walsh amateurs fights. I don't remember being able to bet Brian Stapleton versus <laughs> Xavier Zell. <laughs> so <laughs> they're gonna have to throw him somebody at some point, but it's gonna be a slow burn. Got to sink or swim at some point. Brett Primus and Clay Collard, the most exciting fighter that has ever walked the face of the planet until you watch his fights and you realize that's complete bullshit. Um, <laughs> so uh, what do you make of Primus and Collard? You know these guys very, very well. I do. I do. Uh, this is going to be an ugly fight for somebody. Either Clay Collard or Oh, that's a, that's a good way Primus. to look at it. Yeah. Uh, I know it's Clay Collard. Most of his fights go to decision. Brett Prim- I think somebody gets finished here, man. If if Primus gets his game going, we have seen Clay Collard get flash submitted by AJ McKee. It F- just f- flash submitted. There, there oh, was I mean, no, like, like, like boom, he's out. <laughs> like, yeah, he was <laughs> fight over. It was a flash, and he was done. Um, you know, loses that last fight to Mads Burnell. Didn't really need the win, so I don't put a lot of stock in that. Again, it was at altitude. You know, gets handed the toss up of Pitbull. Pitbull almost knocks him out, and then Pitbull just has no cardio left, which you've seen so far. That's that's Pitbull. Um, Brett Primus, on the other hand, getting wild wobbled by Solomon Renfro and cut up. That's a bad look. We do not like Solomon Renfro, especially at this weight class. So I think one of these guys is going to get their game off, and I would not be shocked to see a finish in this. I think if you bet it, you take the plus money. But I'm not betting a side in this. So when I look at Clay Collard, I don't think the last loss is nothing. He can't, he can't get up. He can't get mm-hmm. out of these clinches. Look at his last four fights. The, the Clay Collard, this is one that this this is what PFL has told us that it's the most exciting fighter. <laughs> except I don't know the most exciting fighter who's lost three, uh, you know, out of four, especially in kind of boring uh, OAM. That was a boring fight. The Mads Brunel, that was a boring fight. Um, AJ McKee would didn't last long enough to be boring, but what do these three have in common? What do you lose by clinches, mm-hmm. takedowns? Uh, what does he win by someone that's willing to stand there and bang? And if he doesn't get the first, you know, Pitbull doesn't get the first round knockout, he's toast. Um, the Burgos was kind of the same thing. We thought that was going to go the distance because they kept billing it as the most exciting fight ever. And it wasn't, um, this is just too big a hole in the game of Clay Collard. I think Primus has him. I, I, I I I do not like betting on these PFL guys that can't do anything with adversity in the clinch and yeah. and the takedown game. Um, I just watching watching him not being able to do anything against against Burnell when it, when Burnell took him down was just horrifying. It was just a horrifying. Yeah, look. come the third, it's tough. He, he it's he's really bad. The third, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I I have Primus in this one um but the under that's a good one because primus gets to his back collard has no defense but if collard keeps it on the fight he's probably going to knock him out so under's... yeah Pr- primus is way open on the feet we saw him wincing and shying away from shots <laughs> i mean i don't like when i see what from either guy <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> i yeah. think we're good on an under there uh gadzi we're off and michael defort michael defort wrecked everyone's parlays last last card he was mm-hmm. I, I don't want to give him all the credit for wrecking parlays because pretty much everyone wrecked the yeah. uh, parlays. It was a mess, but, oh, uh, man. Um, it's it's really interesting because you look at this fight against Mads Brunel and you go, oh, he got the guillotine choke. It's, yeah, that's good. But then he loses the <laughs> Piccolotti where he looked terrible. He looked but, horrible. But then you go back and look at the Brunel and go, well, he looked terrible in the first round. He looked terrible in the first 30 seconds of the mm-hmm. – of the second round. So I think I may have switched my opinion. I think DeFort sucks. I'm, I'm actually going to go there. That DeFort is, sucks and, and is completely overrated. And I think it's Rabatinoff. And I don't think it's even close. What do you think? 
I agree a hundred percent. And Ooh. I've, I've said, we're going to get him. We're going to get him. <laughs> we're we're going to get him. Get him. <laughs> I thought he was going to win his last one. Cause it was just such a softball with Piccolotti who had nothing to fight for no playoff chances. And he just phoned it in. Um, Robotanoff is going to grind on this guy. And we've seen his cardio not hold up already. I don't think he's prepared what's coming forward. Now, what Robotanoff, how many times can you win in a row? Like we always say, it, it's a law of averages. At some point, you're going to get caught. I don't think Dufort's the guy to do it. I, you know, Robotanoff is the favorite to win the whole thing. And I think he is going to expose Dufort's lack of cardio and lack of wrestling, wrestling. Submission game's good for him, but wrestling, wrestling, he's he's been hit some uh, hitting some softballs since his time in the PFL. Rubatinoff was one of the guys that I walked away from the Utah card, and I was like, all right, his cardio is good. Yeah, his cardio held up. Mm-hmm. Like there was not much you could do on that card. Like everyone was tired. Rubatinoff kind of maintained the pace. He is not going to get tired, and mm-hmm. uh, we watched Dufort have too many holes in the game, so. Rob Wilkinson, and uh, I'm just calling him Yags. Mm-hmm. I, I started writing my article, and I was like, Yags. I was like, that's a great nickname. We should just call him Yags. So before I get crucified in the uh, comment section about my pronunciation of name, you're not going to get me trying to pronounce it because I'm calling him Yags. Uh, Rob Wilkinson and Yags here. I think we're getting a value on Rob Wilkinson. I like him to win. What do you think? I'm going Wilkinson to win in this. I am. He seems like he's on a mission, man. We wanted to see what he was going to be like coming back after the suspension from the steroids and all that stuff. I think he's looked great. Is his body different? Yeah. Like it, 100% his body is different from last season. But it hasn't looked like it affected him. That last fight with Silvera was a cardio mess grind fest. Absolute grind fest. And he still managed to win it out. So for me to see that he could win a decision it was very important when it comes to the PFL and PFL playoffs specifically. You don't need finishes. So Rob showed that he can gut through and win a cardio depleting decision at altitude. I think he wins this thing. However he wants, I think come the second round, he's going to be fresher. He's got the crisper striking, the better power. If Yags cannot take him down, and get on top of him, he is going to be in trouble <laughs> because Rob Wilkinson's power has not gone away. It's still the same from before. And honestly, I think it's a much more well-rounded game this year than in Rob Wilkinson's past. I think he wants the redemption with the title. He's motivated. Great line under minus 200. I like Rob Wilkinson in this spot. I do too. Um, I mean, Yags. Yeah, he won against uh, Beyond. Boy, were we so out on Beyond. Um, I, he's pretty damn predictable. Yeah, he's very predictable. And in Utah, that was that was about as bad of a situation as you could get for Beyond. So Yags gets lamp there. Uh, Jacob Neto, who it turns out is a complete fraud. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, and you're right. Like Wilkinson, <laughs> the, the, this one. This is going to be kind of a trip up here if you don't realize what happened in this mm-hmm. Utah car. Like, we expected this to be a banger, and you could tell both guys from the very beginning were like, I, I can't do this. Uh, 45 can't seconds in. I, yeah, we can't it strike. It was obvious. We're dead. Like, but, so it's just like we're going to hug and wrestle, and we're going to do whatever we can. Um, so you, this that's a classic. You cannot take anything away from that fight. <laughs> both guys were like, just give me, give me the hell out of here. Give me. Dude, we're both in the playoffs. Can we just end this now? It's, it's, there probably was a lot of that. Don't get hurt. Um, yeah. Just, you know, um, so I'm with you that Wilkinson, I like the the Wilkinson on a, on a mission to prove, hey, like I know I tested positive for everything that everybody else was on, mm-hmm. um, but, but yeah. uh, I like my chances here. That's a good point. He tested positive for making it a fair fight. Everybody <laughs> tested positive <laughs> for that. So uh, if you guys could do me a favor, hit the like button. It really helps the algorithm out. Let's uh, YouTube uh, know that we're doing a good job uh, for everybody. Leave a comment. Tell us who you like in the PFL. And don't forget to join us for the takedown live. I will be live on Friday for PFL. And then Jim and I will be live for the Australia card, UFC 305. 
Um, had a fantastic live show on Dana White yeah. Contender Series. We nailed Bruno Lopez at plus one fifty four. That was one of our great ones. We were able to uh, <laughs> we were able to nail some picks based on the preview videos that we hadn't seen. Yeah, the before. under two and a half was our preview. The under right? two yeah. and a half was a great one when we saw one guy walking out who had no did not want anything to do with. Uh, it was people. um, it was his corner man. Oh, that's right. He brought high school kids yeah. to his corner. Yeah. His like, corner this, man looked like they were, they were like this guy's done. activity. Yeah, yeah, he's done. Meanwhile, the other guy brought um, Ben Henderson. Ben... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ben Henderson. <laughs> I brought Ben we'll Henderson him. <laughs> to my PM to 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 my Dana White contenders fight. Who'd you bring? I don't know. My locker roommate, Stephen Matt, <laughs> the, the guy I shared <laughs> locker with in high school. So, uh, yeah. So the live shows, uh, they are absolutely worth its weight. You, we, mm-hmm. you nail one or two picks on the live show just by watching the live show, and they're worth it. And plus, they're just a, a hell time, of a lot man. of fun. They're really mm-hmm. entertaining. So, all right, let's get to the main event. Two guys, man, do we know these guys really, really well? Ipa Kasang and I. Josh Silviero, what do we do with this fight? I'd just like to say happy Impa Kasanganai Day to everybody. You're right. <laughs> We've had a couple of these uh, over the past two years for Impa. Um, look, it's a rematch. Go with Impa. Uh, d- d- why get off the train now? Why are we are free rolling. We have picked every single one of Impa's fights correct. Not even just pick them the correct, but pick them exactly how they would go. Uh, the props and everything. I, I believe we even spoke about the decision uh, against Silvera last season. It's like just work him. You don't have to finish him. Yeah. Uh, the Johnny Eblen five fight. Five rounds. That was yeah. a big, that was five rounds. So mm-hmm. got cardio involved in that one. And same thing with the Eblen fight, right? That was five rounds. And just really easy to predict with Impa. And I think he's the most well rounded in this division. The step up to two hundred five has done him very very well. Uh, that Neto fight, I feel like some people are a little worried about. Again, we were at altitude. And you want to know whose cardio didn't fail at altitude either? Impacasanganai's cardio didn't fail at altitude. We saw Neto get tired. And he got tired, he got put out. Um, I don't see any improvements from Josh Silvera. Please, please fill us in on the mythical creature that is Josh Silvera in the PFL. All right, so here's... <laughs> I'm going back to 2022. So he loses a decision to Amari. Fine. Uh, they give him the gift that is uh, being able to fight uh, Sam Key, who's probably one of the worst PFL fighters we've seen, who's gotten multiple fights. So he gets the win. He should. He fights Delon Monte. Delon Monte steps back mm-hmm. and tears his knee. This was not something that Joshua Barrett did. It wasn't a kick. It wasn't a wrestling move. Monte stepped wrong stepping back, and because of that, Silvera gets credited with a round one knockout. Six points. Six points. He <laughs> fights Ty Flores, who's kind of a journeyman. If you watch this fight, Ty Flores is starting to pull away in the first round, and you see Josh Silvera's cardio vanishing. If this was the bar of the video game of the energy, it was like, doo, 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 doo. like he throws a Hail Mary knee that lands and Flores gets knocked out. If he doesn't land that knee, he is done. He's probably mm-hmm. getting finished in round two because his gas was absolutely on empty. Then he completely gets fraud checked against Ippa. Like Ippa puts a five round schooling on him. Silvera was lost. Uh, Ippa just worked him on the feet, wrestling, whatever. Silvera never had a chance. So then what happens? Everybody and their mother bets on Sadabusi against Josh Silvera. Sadabusi puts his hand down as they're going to the ground and breaks his effing thumb in half. <laughs> and Sadabusi... I'm still going to give Sadabusi shit about this. We've seen fighters fight with broken legs and torn knees and everything. Sadabusi tapped faster than uh, Kiefer <laughs> Crosby <laughs> did. When, <laughs> like he's just like, oh, 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 my thumb. And what happens? Josh gets credited with another round first one round knockout. <laughs> and in the first minute, you see Sadabu like piecing him up on the feet. So Silvera does what he has to do is just try and grab him and take him down. Sadabu breaks his thumb. Uh, the loss against Wilkinson, I don't put anything into that one, but mm-hmm. we know who uh, Josh Silvera is. 
Josh Silvera looked like shit in that fight. <laughs> well, his <laughs> cardio doesn't either. have cardio. Like, if, his cardio's if, done. If it, that wasn't at altitude, that was going to be a finish for Rob Wilkinson. Okay. I, Wilkinson I, I got so saying, tired. Like, he's like, the hell with this. I'm just going to wrestle. Yeah, this yeah. So, Josh Silvera is – this win was should not have happened. Um, Like, the Ty Flores, that would, credit to him that he landed the Hail Mary knee, but make no mistake, he was going to lose that fight. And then getting credit for the round one against Monte Mabai. Like, this guy's gotten two wins randomly out of these random injuries, and it's a great place, that Impa. Um, I actually don't think Impa's going to finish him. I think oh. Impa's... I think Ippa's going to take this to decision. I think Ippa wins a striking on the feet, and then in rounds two and three he wrestles and uh, saves his, saves his, I don't know, saves his gas tank or the wear and tear for uh, later on. That's my, gonna, that's that's my prediction. I'll put, I'll go head to head with you on that. You think he get? You think he finishes Josh? I think he gets a finish round two, round three. Okay. I don't. I don't think. I think that. Impa learned a lot from the previous fight with Josh, and there's openings. Okay. He, he is, Impa has seemed a little bit more focused on getting these finishes this season. Fair enough. He's, that'll be fun. That'll be fun. Fair enough. So, all right. So, that is going to do it for us for the PFL video. Make sure you like and subscribe, please. It really helps us out. Also, don't forget to check out the Winning in the Shadows Discord channel and all of our official plays can be found at wagertalk.com. Good luck on your place, and we will see everyone on the live shows Friday for PFL. Don't forget to subscribe to the Winning in the Shadows YouTube channel so you can join us. You get notified when we go live for uh, PFL and then for UFC on Saturday as well. Good luck on your plays. We'll see everyone later. Good luck, guys.